Today, the Ford Motor Company's River Rouge plant is still the largest Ford plant in the world. It employs 10,000 people and produces 90,000 cars and trucks a year. In 1908, the year the Model T was introduced, it sold for $825. The factories made 27 cars a day. In 1923, the year the Rouge was completed, the price had dropped to $395. The plant produced over 2,000 cars a day. Ford reduced the price by creating a totally rational system. Efficiency was all that mattered. Standard design was one of the essential components that had very important consequences as to how automobiles would be built in the Ford factory. Uh, what Ford did is that he started out with the principle that his car would be of a standard design. Uh, he used to say you can have any color you want as long as it's black. And the idea is that once you standardize the design of the car, you can standardize the entire production system. Standardized parts means production can be repeated over and over and over again. A boy could come into his factory off the farm not knowing anything about building a car. He can learn to do that job quickly because the machine he's using has only one way to operate. Fast food restaurants don't need employees with cooking skills. These are single purpose machine tools for almost every function in the restaurant. The cash register rings up the change needed. A timer goes off when the chili needs stirring every 15 minutes. Another when the french fries are done every five minutes. When the rush hour is on, the restaurant itself is a machine. This is very different from the 19th century factories of the Industrial Revolution. Workers stood side by side, carrying out unrelated tasks. Experienced machinists decided how the tasks should be done and at what speed. Frederick Winslow Taylor carried out what are today called time and motion studies. His goal was to break a job down to standardized parts, a set of rules. Taylor chose a pig iron gang for this, his most famous study. After watching them work, Taylor redesigned their every motion, instructing them when to start, when to lift, when to walk, and when to stop. Their output went up almost 400%. Taylor called his system scientific management. Taylor compiled hundreds of charts and diagrams that specified those standards and the order in which the jobs had to be done. He put all planning into the hands of managers. Workers would only carry out tasks. It's what happens here. When an order is placed, it flashes onto screens in the production areas. The restaurant has a single purpose, to get the order to the customer within 15 seconds. The layout of the kitchen is designed for maximum efficiency. Workers on the line take no more than two steps in any direction. And to make it work, customers must also have their place. Having filled his factories with single-purpose machine tools, Ford tailorized jobs to remove waste and uncertainty. But even that wasn't enough. The unsupervised worker could still work at his own speed. It was at this point that Ford took one final famous step. He created the assembly line. One of the last uh barriers that Henry Ford succeeded in crossing was to get workers to work at the speed that he wanted them to work. And he did that through the assembly line. Ford engineers arranged work in logical order, so materials and semi-completed parts mechanically made their way through the plant when they were needed. This meant that every worker was feeding and being fed by the assembly line. Today, although automation has replaced many workers in the Rouge plant, the same underlying principles remain. 
But once something as complicated as an automobile had been mass-produced, anything could be mass-produced.